Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 6 o'clock on Wednesday, 24th of January. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, Epiphany Season Evening Prayer. You'll find it in the book, uh, Church of England Common Worship Daily Prayer in the Morning and Evening Prayer during the Seasons part of that volume, Evening Prayer Epiphany. Also, the Church of England's website, Doremus Daily Prayer, and a downloadable app for Apple Android device will provide the words for you. It's the seventh day of the week of prayer for Christian unity, Lesser Festival of Francis de Sales, and you'll find his um, collect and the open closing refrain for the Magnificat, 24th of February, Saints Days and Festivals, halfway through in the book. You're welcome to join me in the building 8 and 6, a Tuesday to Saturday for morning and evening prayer. Uh, you may join the same times by Zoom, the Code on the Fly Church's website and the Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook. It stays there for you to watch as a video for a month. And the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. From on the rising, the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The J.S.B. Monsal Hymn O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Low at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness, high on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be. Fear not to end his courts in the slenderness of the poor wealth thou wouldst reckon as thine. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness, these are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These day we bring them in trembling and fearfulness, he will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give for evenings of tearfulness, trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the appointed Psalms, number 21 and 29. 21 and 29 this evening. You'll find the Psalms at the back of the book, if that's where you're following. The King puts his trust in the Lord. The King shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord. How greatly shall he rejoice in your salvation. You have given him his heart's desire and have not denied the request of his lips. For you come to meet him with blessings of goodness, and set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked of you life, and you gave it him. Length of days for ever and ever. His honour is great because of your salvation. Glory and majesty have you laid upon him. You have granted him everlasting felicity, and will make him glad in your presence. Glad with joy in your presence, rather. For the king puts his trust in the Lord, because of the loving kindness of the Most High he shall not be overthrown. Your hand shall mark down all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them like a fiery oven in the time of your wrath. The Lord will swallow them up in his anger, and the fire will consume them. Their fruit you will root out of the land, and their seed from among its inhabitants, because they intend evil against you, and devise wicked schemes which they cannot perform. You will put them to flight when you aim your bird their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own might. We will make music and sing of your power. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The King puts his trust in the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king for evermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. <coughs> Scrolling past our first reading to a song of praise, the canticle for evening prayer during Epiphany season, turning in our books back to the same evening prayer, Epiphany season. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God's saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. Before we turn to our first reading, Hosea 5 from 1 to 7, this is from Kindle Edition of Celebrating the Saints, reading from an introduction to the devout life by Francis de Sal. <clears throat> the world ridicules devotion in life, caricaturing devout people as peevish, gloomy and sullen, and insinuating that religion makes a person melancholy and unsociable. But the Holy Spirit speaking through the mouths of the saints and indeed through our Saviour himself assures us that a devout life is wholesome, pleasant and happy. The world observes how devout people fast, pray and suffer reproach, how they nurse the sick, give arms to the poor, restrain their temper and do similar deeds, which in themselves and viewed in isolation are hard and painful. But the world fails to discern the interior devotion which renders these actions agreeable, sweet and pleasant. Look at the bees, they suck the bitter juice from thyme and convert it into honey because that is their nature. Devout souls, it is true, do experience bitterness in works of self-discipline, but they are engaged in a process that converts such bitterness into a delicious sweetness. Sour green fruits are sweetened by sugar, bringing a ripeness to what had been unwholesome to the palate. In the same way, true devotion is a spiritual sugar which takes away the bitterness of self-discipline. It counteracts the poor person's discontent and the rich person's smugness, the loneliness of the oppressed and the conceit of the successful, the sadness of one who lives alone and the dissipation of the one who is at the centre of society. In a word, its gift is an equanimity and a balance which refreshes the soul. In creation, God has commanded plants to bring forth fruit, each according to its kind. Similarly, he commands all Christians, who are the living plants of his church, to bring forth the fruits of devotion according to each person's ability and vocation. The practice of devotion will need to be adapted to the capabilities, jobs and duties of each individual. For example, it is not appropriate for a bishop to be, a lead, to be leading the solitary life of a Carthusian, or for the father of a family to be refusing to put aside money as if he were a Franciscan, or for a tradesman to spend the entire day in church as if he were a religious, or for someone in religious vows to be endlessly interrupted by the needs of his neighbour as a bishop must be. Such a pattern of life and devotion is incompatible and ridiculous. True devotion, however, harms no one. On the contrary, it brings a person to wholeness. If our devotional life is not compatible with our lawful vocation, then it is manifestly false. Aristotle says that the bee extracts honey from flowers without ever injuring them, leaving them as fresh and as whole as it finds them. True devotion does better still. It not only does no harm to our vocation and employment, it adorns and beautifies them. <coughs> so to our first Bible reading, has a 4 one two, 7, Hosea 5, verses 1 to verse 7. Hosea is in the Minor Prophets, about halfway through. So the Prophets are the last 
section of Hebrew scriptures. If you open your Bible two thirds of the way through and move back towards the beginning, once you get beyond Malachi and um, Zephaniah and all those splendidly named people, um, you should find Hazar in there before Amos. But after, yeah, before Amos, if you're heading back towards the beginning of the book. But if you go as far as I saw, you've gone too far. You're looking for the book of Hosea. And within Hosea, we're looking at the large number five in the margin, at the head of the pa paragraph, chapter five. <clears throat> within chapter five, the first seven verses. Scroll back from the canticle we read a moment ago, a song of praise, if you're following online. Hosea 5 from 1. Hear this, O priests, give heed, O house of Israel, listen, O house of the king, for the judgment pertains to you, for you have been a snare at Mizpah, and a net spread upon the table, and a pit dug deep in Shittim, but I will punish all of them. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hidden from me, for now, O Ephraim, O you have played the whore, Israel is defiled. Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God, for the spirit of whoredom is within them, and they do not know the Lord. Israel's pride testifies against him, Ephraim stumbles in his guilt, Judah also stumbles with them. With their flocks and herds they shall go to seek the Lord, but they will not find him. He has withdrawn from them. They have dealt faithlessly with the Lord, for they have borne illegitimate children. Now the new moon shall devour them, along with their fields. <clears throat> so a fairly brief treatise. The new moon shall devour them, along with their fields. I guess that just means by the time the month is out, the, um, they'll find themselves in exile. Um, words against Mizpah, Tabor, Shittim, Ephraim, Israel, Ephraim, Judah, all have been brought low. Uh, Ephraim in the middle section gets a couple of mentions. Uh, Ephraim and Israel's wrongdoing uh, has not been hidden from God. Ephraim has played the whore, Israel is defiled. So throughout the book of Hosea, we've got this business of whoredom with God being the faithful spouse to God's people and they are unfaithful. Hosea is playing the part as the prophet, uh, casting the role as the faithful God and the expression of faithful God to uh, the spouse or the woman uh, who is God's people. And uh, so that we've got the illegitimate children, we've got faithless, you know, the, the theme runs through. And so as the Jews read this, as we read it, as Christians viewing it as um, the first covenant, but relevant to ourselves as Jesus is Jewish and most of the writers of the second covenant were, <clears throat> that uh, we have an opportunity to reflect and review on where we've been faithless. And uh, if we are engaged in steering a people, a nation, <clears throat> And uh, people who need to find themselves and uh, find faith and be engaged with their spiritual nature. Um, we can use the same themes and ideas to uh, encourage um, apology, restoration and uh, faithfulness that it might flourish. And that the, the fruit of our lives uh, may be legitimate and uh, A good example and a, a credit to God and to us. First Corinthians ten from fourteen, our second Bible reading. Scroll onto it electronically in a Holy Bible. You'll find Corinthians after the four Gospels, then Acts and Romans. Uh, you'll find the first and second book of Corinthians. Moving to the other end, before Revelation and the uh, short number of small number of letters written to individuals, and then the uh, possibly even shorter list of letters written to named. Uh, congregations, Corinthians kind of leads into that, I think, before Hebrews. So we're looking for 1 Corinthians 10 from 14. 1 Corinthians, the book number one in the title, 1 Corinthians. Within 1 Corinthians, we're looking for chapter 10, large number in the chapter, in the margin, at the head of the chapter, head of the paragraph, that's the chapter number, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And within chapter 10, we're starting at verse 14, which is the small number in the text. Again, the verse number 14. And we're going on to read the first verse of the following chapter. So 1 Corinthians 10 from 14 to the first verse of chapter 11. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. 
Consider the people of Israel are not those who eat the sacrifices, partners in the altar. What did I imply then that food sacrifice to idols is anything and that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be partners with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Nor are we provoking the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful. All, all things are lawful, but not all things build up. Do not seek your own advantage, but that of others. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any question on the ground of conscience, for the earth and its fullness are the Lord's. If an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But if someone says to you this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it, out of consideration for the one who informed you, and for the sake of conscience, I mean the other's conscience, not your own. Why should my liberty be subject to the judgment of someone else's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why should I be denounced because of what I... Of that for which I give thanks. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offence to Jews or to Greeks or to the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, so that they may be saved, be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. So interesting, the first paragraph um, suggests, instructs, directs quite strongly um, the congregation of the church in Corinth should flee from the worship of idols. And uh, the Holy Communion is a cup of blessing, sharing the blood of Christ. The bread that is broken is sharing the body of Christ. Um, because there is one bread, we are one body. We all partake of the one bread. So that we are what we eat <clears throat> and we are engaging with belief system very physically when we eat and drink and so therefore we shouldn't eat and drink in a way that binds us into another belief system and then Paul having been quite clear suddenly gets a bit compl a bit uh, what's the word uh, nuanced or confusing um, talking about idols not actually existing but also being powerful. Um, you cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons, but that's kind of what he said to start off with. But are idols anything? Well, demons are things, but uh, idols, either they are or they aren't. And um, my view is that for an idol to be a temptation, it must have power, um, energy associated with it. Now, the idols that have been talked about here are um, the same idols as Babylon would have had, cast images um, similar to what Babylon would have had. Um, Artemis, for example. God fell from heaven, silver images made of the gods. God was worshipped, uh, made a difference to the lives of the people, particularly in the town was it Ephesus, um, where that happened. Um, and these idols would have been magic, they would have had psychic powers, they would have been um, sort of peer, not necessarily pressure, but belief, you know, community support to the concept of them having power and agency. And then uh, the second paragraph um, talks about eating meat offered to idols. So it's not the worship of idols, but this is eating meat that has been uh, blessed or has been, that the lifeblood has been taken from the animal as an offering to um, an idol. And uh, Paul says it doesn't matter if you give thanks to God and then eat it, it's, you're covered. Um, but if somebody tells you it's been offered to an idol, then don't, because then that kind of marks out. So I suppose it's a little bit like somebody saying Jesus Christ and us bowing our head, maybe as you hear the word being uttered, but not necessarily making great fuss about it. Um, if we eat or do or are involved in something to our ignorance, then that's one thing. But if we're told something is wrong, and then we go ahead and do it, then we are culpable. And it makes a statement, it makes a point. And so the, the rule of thumb is that we should do everything um, for the glory of God. And uh, if we're uh, confronted with a tricky situation, somebody does something work, if we don't do it, then we'll stick out like a sore thumb, um, should we do it? Shouldn't we do it? If it gives glory to God, if we go with it, then do that. If it gives glory to God, if we make a stand, then do that. 
So to the responsory back in evening prayer, epiphany season. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. The Song of Mary. Uh, the refrain uh, may be particular to common bishops or teachers, for example. Join in at my sorrowful claims if you wish. Otherwise, uh, pause a moment. If you are following the book, look up 24th of January, um, Francis de Sable, and you'll find direction there for the refrain. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. So, Son, Essence 3 in 1, 1 in 3, we come to you at the end of this day and we thank you for what has been good about it. Um, experiences that we have had that have uh, enabled us to demonstrate skills and talents where other people are grateful for the people we are. Where we've had good news about uh, income, relationship, work, where things have gone well. We thank you for all these positive experiences that make us feel good about being ourselves, that enable us to feel good about being alive. <clears throat> and we give you the credit and the glory. There also might have been moments in the day where our wrongdoing, our short-sightedness, our short temper, our tiredness um, have brought us low and of course us to be unkind to others, our own misguidedness, our own voices, maybe even unkind to ourselves. And uh, we might be bothered by anxiety, <coughs> by uh, challenges in the news in the world about people treating each other and our inability to do anything about it. <coughs> People might have been unkind to us directly, we might have had bad news in terms of work or money, bills, relationship. And so if that's been our experience and we feel distant from you, uh, reassure us of your presence and your blessing and your love that we might get through the night and face the day ahead. <clears throat> from a recent international, we pray for all who've been forced to flee Syria, often with only the clothes on their backs. We pray they find a warm welcome from Christians and churches and other peoples wherever they find themselves. Turning to Christian AIDS prayer diary, and we are invited on the 24th to uh, remember the International Day of Education. We pray for access to education for children and young people across the world. <clears throat> the Church of England's prayers for the Holy Land include the lines, God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for young people heading into combat, bearing the burden of what others have done and what they will be asked to do. For civilians in Israel, Gaza and the West Bank, that they will be protected, that every life would count, be cherished and remembered. And, uh, we don't understand why the prayer hasn't been answered, but we ask it nevertheless once again. The Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine includes the lines we pray comfort for those. No, uh, we mourn every casualty of conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. <coughs> Suffolk Diocese Prayers, we pray for our bishops Martin and Mike, Rural Dean uh, Josh and uh, Archdeacon Rich. We thank you for their um, calling. And we pray you bless them and enrich them in the, the expression of that as they engage with your, with your mission and ministry. And uh, with this cycle, we pray for Faith, who is the lead clergy person appropriately named in action with Great Walding Field. Pray for other clergy and ministers working with him, her there. And uh, we pray for all the treasurer and secretaries um, keeping nuts and bolts of buildings and things ticking over and uh, organising events and the like. We pray too for chaplains, the armed services, that uh, they will be blessed and a blessing. Uh, and we pray for Matteo, who is subdean of Biharamulo Cathedral, and Bratton Bralton, who is assistant pastor in that same institution. You know, may they be inspired as they see you working through them. Pray for our wardens looking after our parishes of uh, St. Peter, 
Holton, St. Peter Wenderson, St. Andrew Bramfield, All Saints Blythe and St. Peter Thorrington. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we did that this morning, but we do pray for the people and businesses associated with those places. So Beckles Road, South Road, Road the Street, Holton Road, Bungie Road, Blythe Lane, Sparrow Road in Holton. Uh, Blackheath Road, Blythe Close, Back Lane, Oak Meadow Close, Church Lane, Coldsview, Back Road, Coles Hill, Coldcroft, Byford Lane, Hammonds Walk at Weniston. Church Farm Road, Bridge Street, The Hill, Pittman's Road, Over Edwards Lane, Low Road, Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Thornton Road, Weniston Road in Bramfield, South Road, Road, Blyford Lane, Kings Lane in Blyford. The Priory Lane Street, Fox Lane, Low Road, Fairfields, The Wash, Brussels Green, Russell Road, Willow March Lane, Devils Lane in Thornton. <coughs> we pray for the businesses in those places, they will thrive and prosper and thereby continuing to be able to provide good jobs and services to the local economy. Pray for people living in those addresses, especially where they have faith, that there'll be salt and light to their community, being valued, compelling and healing. Pray for people whose lives are going well, they might turn to be thanksgiving and be good neighbours, and uh, those for whom life is a challenge, may they be um, good recipients of that care and assistance and uh, turn to you in their pleading. We pray a special blessing on Lee and Janet, Peter, Jean, Jonathan, Felicity, Rachel, Francis, Helen, Joan, Henry, Jeannie, Tracy, John, Moira, Malcolm, Cynthia, David, and uh, all others you may know for whom life is particularly troublesome at the moment. Pray your breakthrough in sovereign grace, bring healing, hope, salvation, deliverance, <clears throat> that you'll make a way where there is no way, but a sure and certain encounter with you where that would be helpful. We pray that would be the experience of these people whom we care. Pray for Dave, we'll give with thanks for all that was good in the lives of David, Malcolm, Hilda, Bob, Ron, Trevor, Norman, Alan, Mary, George, and all others who have recently died, including those who died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those who have taken their own lives. Pray for those who we've, we've known and loved and seen no longer, those are so totally faithfully here, and alongside Francis, all whose years mine falls at this time. May he pray for us that we may, might be found to be equitable, gentle, persuasive, in uh, lived out and explained expression of faith. We ask the cordial promises to humanity, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances that you'll be for us, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. <laughs> Pray when the Haney is Shirk of us, my Rahat as my rock was in the local year of us for Hazam Sakalib. Pray about the number of Kushal letter and may he wait at Mishirk as much as I had a heart some Fasemi Hasta. Remember my new Russian city of Berima for Hazam of the Kushal had you request my Yarakashna so on the Fasam Akada. Pray about my daughter Christian Strokadi for her and she has in Yarakashna Rasama. Then he will question Seraph as Miss Paramish or the Haney Shazif as in Yaris. Pray about the Fatam with Rukashna so he can eat him as he met up at my boss. Yeah, from a photo, we should all go to you for him as a spell of my year of Christophessing, yes. Kiwi at his use, my Arabah, my spell of the year of Masabadi Bell. Nico Jesse for her, my dear, Masabadi, or she see on a cross. Pain you shall see the game very about her, near the Kadir of a shoot on the Asabada. With the nearest visit, my Arabah, my dear, or Christopher, that you fancy had his performance as any other as a major cutter. The man shall see it by Rebushla. Holy God, who called your Bishop Francis de Salle to bring many to Christ through his devout life and to renew your church with patience and understanding, grant that we may, by word and example, reflect your gentleness and love to all we meet through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube. <clears throat>